If your warriors don't have confidence in their cause, why would they pull the triggers to shoot their bullets? And so they feed you stories about your enemies to make you hate them. Elevator. I'm gonna take your finger. Typical! What's going on back there? I don't know if you can hear this, but our dropship is down. No sign of him, sir. But it looks like his nectar administrator was damaged in the crash. He must be going into withdrawal by now. Copy that. Carpenter is a code haze. Terminate with extreme prejudice. This is the second part of the classic Game Room HD review of Haze for the PlayStation 3. And in this part, we're going to get into the good, the bad, and the ugly of this game. Starting with the good. As you saw in the beginning, your character, who starts out as one of the Mantel forces in the first half of the game and also in the first part of our two-part review here switches sides and goes over to the rebel forces get ready for a big dose you start to learn the secret of Mantel what your forces were doing there to begin with at least vaguely what you're doing there and where you are and you get to just spend the next couple hours slaughtering the Mantel forces through a variety of locations, like an old container ship, along the beach, through some villages. The storyline unfolds. It starts to slow down, though. I'd say it definitely loses some of the snap that it had in the early part of the game. Because at this point, you've sort of figured out what's going on, and now it's just kill everybody. But the gameplay is fun, I, and, I, and I still stand by the fact that I had a lot of fun playing this game. It's a good popcorn flick uh, video game, meaning you know, this isn't anything groundbreaking. You've seen this all before in other games, but it's a lot of fun to machine gun everybody, throw the grenades, set traps. Looks good, plays good, and the action's pretty non-stop. It's a lot of fun. You get to shoot a lot of people. They're shooting at you. The difficulty increases. I noticed after the first review that a lot of people seemed very negative on the game and said that other reviewers had slammed it and given it bad reviews, and I don't read any other reviews or magazines, so I have no idea what anybody else has said. I personally enjoyed playing the first half of the game, but I did notice that there were some parts where things seemed a little glitchy. Like characters walking halfway through a wall, Sometimes you'd get to a point in the game where something that was supposed to happen didn't happen and you had to go back and do it again. You, Little things like that that didn't take away from the gameplay completely. And I started feeling like they tried to pack too many different things into this game. Like the driving in the helicopter which seemed not as well designed as the running around and fighting parts of the game. When the trucks explode, they sort of disappear and then the wheels go flying everywhere. From a technical standpoint, I felt like this wasn't as solid as some other first-person shooters of comparable size and scope. Like Halo 3, Bioshock, Resistance, Fall of Man, and Time Splitters. Hey, 
but I was really enjoying the story and the fighting. And the Mantel guys in their bright yellow are easy to spot out and shoot from a distance. It's th their outfits make about as much sense in combat as the Redcoats from the Revolutionary War. Like, you couldn't miss these guys a half mile away. Although the action picks up, the storyline slows down, you're fighting with the rebels, and you end up getting to a part where you have to escort this enormous missile that they're eventually going to launch at the land carrier from the beginning of the game. Or so they claim, I haven't quite gotten to the end yet, and I'll show you why in a moment. You have to fight your way across the bridge, disarm things. It was at this point that I really started feeling like this game did not have the variety of levels that Time Splitter's Future Perfect had, for instance. And that's where we get to the bad. The bad is repetition. And the bad is driving this stupid pickup truck, which sucks. The driving in this game is subpar, to say the least. And there we have an exploding vehicle that vanishes, yet sends wheels flying in every direction. Now I'm fighting my way up this mountain to the observatory. And it's like battle after battle of the same thing. Parts of it are challenging, and there's still some good gunplay. But then we get to the ugly. And by ugly, I mean... Serious glitches in the game. No turning back! Now, I'm not a game designer. I have incredible respect for those who are. But my PlayStation 3 works just fine. I've played lots of games on it in the past week, and none of them have had missing floors and environments that fall into an abyss of nothing. I had been thinking that there were some technical glitches in the game, and this solidified my viewpoint on that. This game was obviously rushed out before it was thoroughly checked and completed. Which is really surprising. <laughs> Getting back into some fun stuff, in the background you can hear that bomb dropping sound or missile sound. I think that's the identical sound they used during the Vietnam level in Time Splitters. Good sound. Good sound effect. And for this reason alone, I certainly uh, would recommend this game only as a rental, because I had a lot of fun playing it, up until about 60 or 70 percent of the way through the game. When it was getting repetitive, the storyline slowed down, and then the only way I even got past that glitch in the game was by driving my truck onto uh, Something. I just kept driving around until I finally died and then respawned at the next level, but then my PlayStation 3 crashed, so I had to reboot it, and uh, just kept on playing. Kept fighting up the mountain and into the mines, and then I was getting tired and fell asleep. And the thing is, a game like this, like Haze, is supposed to be one of your big flagship titles on a system like the PlayStation 3. It's a big budget, first person shooter, has a national advertising campaign. And then to leave errors like that in the game, and like the people that can walk halfway into the walls. I can see now why a number of other reviewers have also given this game subpar ratings, because it's a lot of fun, but, but huge glitches like that just knock this game down several levels. Time Splitter's Future Perfect, if you haven't seen my review of that game, you should, because everything is done right in that game. That game is fun from start to finish. Variety of different environments, fun characters, great gameplay, solid technical construction. And even though I am disappointed in some respects with Haze, as you can see, I have to say that I can't wait to see what Free Radical does 
with Time Splitters 4. In fact, the plot of Time Splitters 4 could be Cortez going back in time to do more QA work and testing and programming on Hayes. That would seriously be an awesome video game. And I'll end it at that. This is a good rental. You should pick it up and play it. Maybe there's already a download that fixes that glitch. I don't know. Personally, I think it should work the first time, but... As I said, I can't program video games. The only thing I'm good at is making smart-ass comments about Atari 2600 cartridges. I'm selling myself short. I'm also good at grilling. Steaks, hamburgers. I'm good at Herzog's Y for the Sega Genesis. And, uh, what else can I do? My dog likes me. You know, assuming I feed her. So I'm good at feeding my dog. <laughs>